he cannot have much strength to help people. He's affected, he lose strength. And then the worst scenario is that he is farther and farther away from God and one day he can lose salvation even if he continue to have strong hatred. And then how we can forgive other people? So first we re remove the hindrance. The hindrance could be uh, we, because we have anger toward people, we are frustrated with the world, we don't like the world, we don't like the people. So in our heart we have all these negative strongholds in our mind. And then we ask God to help us to, to, to say that God will give the blessings back to me. And I, you know, the blessings actually come from God. I don't have to depend on people. But some people have the habit of depending on people. They rely on people. They rely on how people treat them nicely. So they, they always rely on people. Then when, they are dis they dis uh, when the, the other person hurt him, then they are very disappointed and then they will become very unhappy. Then it's hard for them to forgive. So the first thing is to put down the stronghold of hatred, of negative thinking about people. And then, uh, how can we forgive people? We say that God has forgiven me so many times, God has forgiven so many of my sins, and God is um, also opening up the way, opening a way for me to go higher and higher, and God is blessing me, so I want to forgive other people so I can be blessed by God, because if I don't uh, forgive other people, I will suffer. And then I want to pray for the person. I want to tell myself, do something nice to him. Repay wickedness with goodness. So if we treat them nicely, God is very happy and God will bless us more when we treat people nicely. So we motivate ourselves and say, if I treat him nicely, God is happy with me and then my life will go higher and higher and God is pleased with me. Okay? And then so... Um, uh, and then we can appreciate ourselves whenever we can go a little step. I can start to pray for him. I can start to be nice to him. I start to help him, start to smile at him. Then God is very happy. And then I can, be forgive, I can forgive him even more. So we'll find ways how to help people to forgive totally. Now, all these hows have to come from our own life that we have worked on changing our life in the in the process of changing our life, we have learned the how. Because for myself, I work on how to forgive people. You know, I, I see the work of God in all these years. That God has guided me to forgive people who hurts me. That I work through this and I put down the hurts from other people and work on how to forgive them totally and want to bless them. So God has worked in my life in every area, how to overcome sin. And then I just tell people how I do it and I find that you know God has find, uh, given me the wisdom how to take care of the sins when they are in my mind so if I have any unforgiveness in my mind immediately I will start to take care of that so firstly we take care of our own sins and then from our experience how to apply the Bible we can tell people how how to do it Okay, and then Matthew 6 19, do not lay up your, for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. So, now this passage I already marked in red, the, uh, the grace of God. Okay, lay up for yourself treasures. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of it is grace, some of it is not. It's just, do not lay up treasures on earth. When moth and rust will destroy, the thieves will break in. But lay up your treasures in heaven. So, the treasures will stay in heaven. And there is no moth and no rust to destroy. And their thieves do not break in. So, so it's telling us that what we give to God will stay in heaven forever. So uh, it's, it's, it's worthy to give to God. When we give to God, God remembers that and it stay in heaven forever and ever. So Matthew 6, 19 to 20, the outline examples. Many Christians don't tithe faithfully. 
they do not give faithfully. And the second, nature. God owns everything, and He is a caring God. He is a God who gives. He gives to us. And grace, God remembers our offering and will keep our offering in heaven forever and will reward us. Now, if I use the three points again about the grace, first, it's God who gives blessings to us to give us eternal life. He gives blessings to us so that we can give, so that we can, can have abundance. Secondly, He gives us the ability to give. And then thirdly, when we give, He remembers and He rewards us. So these are the three points that you can remember when we talk about grace. And then why many, many people don't have faith to give offering faithfully? Because they just think about the money. If I give it, I will lose it. They don't think of when I give it, it will stay in heaven. They don't believe that. And then warning, when we just keep our treasures on earth, our treasure will perish. And also we are stealing from God if we don't give faithfully. And how we can have strong motivation to offer to God faithfully. So first we remove the hindrance. The hindrance could be lack of faith that we cannot believe that God will give to us, that we fear that we'll lose the money, we fear that we'll be poor. But the more we fear, the more the poorer we will be. And then for people who love to love God and are willing to give, the richer they are and more abundant they are. Sometimes not necessarily uh, uh, richer in the worldly sense, but they are abundant in everything. And God will give them enough so that they can give and they can help other people. So when we are faithful, God will bless us so we can help more people. Now to enhance this message, I will use uh, Matthew, uh, Romans 8.32 that God has not, you know, uh, saved His Son, uh, did not he who did not spare his son to give him up for us all, how will he not also give us all things together with him? That he, God has given us all things. When we have faith in God, when we follow God and love God and serve God, God is very happy and he'll give us all kinds of blessings. So when we, when we give, we say, God, you have given me so many things. I want to love you, I want to respond to you, I want to follow you, I want to obey you and love you and when I give I have confidence that the more the faith, the more faithful I am, the more you bless me and you build up my life. Now my, um, the difference between this teaching, the Bible does say that when we give it will be rewarded. The, the Bible does say that. Um, but the difference between this and the prosperity gospel is that the prosperity gospel uh, always emphasizes how much you can get back. It's like you give so that you can get back. If you're in debt, you give more and then you get the money back. So it's the intention to get money back. Instead, we should give to glorify God, to, to bless the kingdom of God. And, but we believe that God will give to us. But we don't give in order to get something back. We give just to give. Just we, uh, we just like God. We appreciate God. Therefore, we give. Okay, another example here. Let me see. Because of time. Oh, this last one. Okay, so we'll use this one. Uh, Matthew 6, 26, look at the birds in the air of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Now, so the grace here is that heavenly Father feeds the birds, and we are of more value than the birds. We are of high value. So I hope that we are of high value, we are important. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So God clothes the grass which, you know, it just stayed there for, for one day, and then how much more will He, he clothe us? So He will 
bless us with clothing and also with beauty. And then when we seek God's kingdom, seek God's kingdom has two meanings. First, to, we want to bring more people to believe in Jesus to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the second is that wherever God is in control, God is, you know, uh, the Lord, when people obey Him, there, he, his, there is His kingdom. So we want to let God be the king in my heart. He's the king in my heart that, that I'll submit to Him, that my life is submission to Him, that I glorify God in every word and action. Then, and also seek His righteousness, that means obeying His, his uh, commandment. Then all these things shall be added to us. So this is grace, promise that. God will give us all things when we, uh, when we uh, seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Okay, now examples, many people worry. Uh, they worry that they don't have money. And in the nature of God, God owns everything. He's gracious to give. He wants to give. And grace, that He cares about the birds of the, and the grass. He cares about us much more. So He will provide for us. When we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, He will provide for us richly. So if we use the three points again, God in His abundance came to bless us. And then God gave us ability to bless other people. And then when we bless other people and uh, give to God and give to other people, God will reward us. So these three points. First, God comes to bless us. Second, He help us to bless other people. And then when we bless other people, He'll, he'll reward us. Okay? So how three points in a grace, at least three points. He blesses us, and then He blesses us to bless other people. And then when we bless other people, He'll reward us. So because of the grace of God, we're willing to give because He has given us so much. And the more willing we are give to, to give, the more He will bless us. And He'll uh, bless us in every way. And why many people worry and don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness and don't give uh, and worry? Because they, they just look at the money. They just look at what they have on earth. So they worry and then they don't, they're afraid to give. And then warning. Worrying will bring more problems. When a person worries, then he, uh, he's unhappy, he has no strength, and then he will not do well in his work and he would not do well in his ministry, and it will bring more problems. And how we can trust in God and seek God's kingdom and righteousness. So how can we have faith in God and trust in God? So first we want to remove the unbelief. That why do we have unbelief? Because we always uh, look at the world, look at what we have, look at the problems, therefore we have unbelief. But if we look at you know, God's blessing in the world, we look at how God has blessed us in the past, God, how God has blessed other Christians, then we know that God will bless us when we trust in Him and follow Him. So to build up the faith, God will continue to bless us. So we trust in God and follow God and obey God. And God will bless me more. And I want to seek God's kingdom. How to seek God's kingdom? I really care about people. I want them to be saved. And then God is happy with you. You know, I'm eager to hear some testimonies from you that you love God more and then you see the blessings of God coming to your life. So I hope to hear testimonies like that uh, to, to, uh, uh, to encourage the people in Africa that you know that, you know, even though you are in a, a difficult country, but still God can do great things in your life. So. Um, uh, that we seek God's kingdom, we want more people saved, and then we want God to be king in our heart and seek His righteousness, and then God will provide for us. God will give us all things. So I hope that we all trust in God for blessings and uh, be strengthened by God. Okay, here I see some questions. I'm going to come closer and answer those questions. Okay, now can we forgive and forget? Now, first we forgive. We, you know, we say God has forgiven me so many th times, so therefore I forgive. And then, uh, and I, I know that it's more important for us to bless the person also, not just to think about how he has hurt us. We want to bless the person, so we want to be nice to them. The more nice 
the nicer we are to them, then the more we can bless the person. So then we, we can uh, uh, do more things to bless the person. That is a more complete forgiveness. Now, can we forget? We can try to forget. The more we forgive, the more we can forget. Now, it's not a requirement to forget totally. Now, actually, you know, we don't totally forget. We still have this memory, but we just don't think about it. So, we just don't think about all the bad things other people do. We want to think about God's grace and also the good things about the person. So, we want to forget so that we can have more energy. We don't want to think about the bad things they've done. We just forget about it and let go. Okay, so, so yes, we can forgive and then gradually forget more and more. And there are those people, even though you forgive, they keep repeating the same thing. How can someone handle them? Okay, now there are two things. First, we forgive and then handle them is a different thing. Okay, we want to forgive them because that's, restore the relationship with God. I don't want to be affected by their sins. So that's why we forgive. But then this person might have problem. For instance, if he's a spouse or a co-worker, we need to talk about how to prevent future problems. For instance, uh, in the ministry, if someone is lazy or not on time and then cause different problems, then we can talk about and we don't have to do it in an angry way we can just discuss how can we prevent uh, this happening again how can we prevent you know uh, being late how can we avoid being late so that is you know discussion now if the person doesn't change as a co-worker we still have the ch a choice of not working with them not having not accept them to be serving in the church. But we still, we, we have forgiven them. But if this person continue to fail, we have the choice not to accept this person as a co-worker in the church. It's, it's up to us. When we find that this person really doesn't want to change, now we forgive them. But how to relate to them, how to fix the problem is another thing. But for a spouse, we don't say, okay, I, I I cannot work with you, so go away. We cannot do that because, you know, what God has to put together, we don't put asunder. So we want to forgive and to work on the relationship, be nice to the person. If he's not nice, we still continue to be nice, try to uh, fix the relationship as much as possible. If we see any improvement, we'll tell them, you're improving. I thank you. I thank you. I appreciate you. You're improving. Mm -hmm.